What's up guys, Main Man Sui here, hoping you're all doing awesome as always. Today I want to talk a little bit about sidestepping. I want to give you guys a very basic understanding of it, a quick introduction. Uh, do keep in mind that this is highly complicated stuff, sidestepping, when to do it, how to do it. Uh, so what we will be doing today is just covering the bare minimum you need, in my opinion. So uh, let's say this is one character, this is another character. This is player 1, and this is player 2. So if I step to this side, I will be stepping towards my left shoulder. So, uh, what can we do in Tekken? If we tap, we can do a side step. If we double tap and hold, we do a side walk. So this one is going to be the side step. This one is going to represent the side walk. So, uh, what goes here in here is having a read on the opponent, when is he going to attack, what spacing are we working at, is he far away from me or is he close to me. Uh, if someone is close to you, the sidestep can be preferable. Uh, close. If we're far away, I would recommend doing sidewalks, uh, if you see them ru running at you. Uh, from afar but overall I would use the sidestep to counter attack because you have to realize that when you do only a sidestep you're very very vulnerable and this is because uh, combinations in Tekken let's say this is an attack uh, depending on the character it could track left it could track right, potentially, you know, just hitting you out of your sidestep immediately. Or it's a homing move. But for, for this example, let's just say this attack above me here, it has no tracking whatsoever. Okay? So it just goes straight ahead. So your sidestep evades it. But let's say this is actually part of a string. It's a free hit string. Now, almost as a universal rule, some strings have no tracking. But pretty much as a universal rule, every one of these hits, in reality, will realign with the opponent. So if we do this step I showed you guys here, uh, a quick side step to the left, it will look a bit like this. It will go straight ahead and then it will start catching up to you, like this. Uh, strings usually realign. So a sidestep, I will most often, people may, 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 may have di diverse opinions on this, but that's why when I sidestep, I usually do the sidestep to counter attack. It's either a step into jabs immediately, or I step electric. If you watch my streams, that's usually how I do it. I'll do a move where they, I hope they block it, and it's usually a move like Kazia's jab or while sending one where I know, oh, they, they're gonna throw a jab now. And then I step electric. Because you don't really want to do a sidestep and then do a long ass wind up move or just stand there because of what I just explained up here. You're very vulnerable after a sidestep. So I usually use this to counter attack. And the quicker you can attack after the sidestep, the better if you do jabs. This is all hypothetical, please keep that in mind, you might be fighting a Xiaoyu who does a crushing move all over the place. That's why a lot of Koreans, and this is very advanced, very advanced, uh, they will do a sidestep into guard, and then they just uh, uh, react. They step, and if they see that they got a successful step, and the opponent attacked, and whiffed, ooh, electric. You see, if you ever see JDCR do this, if you ever play him, you'll just go like, oh my god. But uh, yeah, I just don't want to get this to get uh, overly complicated, so I'm just gonna again go down to the general rule. If you choose to do a sidestep, I would use that to counterattack. You can do a step into guard to try and see what does my opponent do, but mostly you will sidestep and counterattack. If you can react to your opponent's whiff, and then attack, then do that. But it's it's not bad to sidestep and throw an electric, in my opinion, or throw jabs. I would go with jabs if I'm a beginner, because that's more consistent. 
but the sidewalk is something I usually use when I feel like I'm gonna get to my opponent's back. I have a good read. I'm, I'm gonna sidewalk around you and hope to get away from your string here that will realign. But if you sidewalk, you get that continuous sideways momentum. That's what the sidewalk is for. I want to get to your back and I want to do a, a specific punish, you know, because a lot of characters have a string that hurt a lot to the, in the back. Like, for example, uh, Law suddenly gets access to his junkyard, back to 3 4, which is all guaranteed and launches in the back. It's just, it does obscene damage. So, again, in my opinion, sidestep is to counter attack. And I use a sidewalk when I get a read to get his back. I hope that doesn't sound too sexual. <laughs> get, get him in the back, in the rear. Um, and of course, when to do this, as I talked before, as I said before, I like to do while sending one with Kazia into a sidestep. Uh, this is all mind games. But usually attacks, like a classic downward one with your character, or a jab, that leaves you... Uh, watch my introduction to frames video. Any move that leaves you, you know, at minus one to minus three, you can play around a lot with those frames. Like, try and step. Did he do a counter attack? Should I counter now? Maybe you shouldn't sidestep after a move that's minus eight. You know, that's probably not a good idea. Your, your, your frame lockdown, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, but of course in the end it's all mind games uh, is, is what I'm trying to say and uh, something else that is, uh, is uh, that I see begin this is such a beginner mistake uh, wait uh, I'm gonna see if I can uh, erase some of this uh, this is gonna be too slow yeah, I'm sorry if I'm a bit slow. Pretend I'm your boring old teacher from grammar school that takes out, you know, that eraser and goes, uh, except I'm 50 times as boring, I guess. So, I just want to cover a beginner mistake I see a lot of people do. I don't know how many times I've seen posted to Reddit like, oh, so they say just sidewalk left because he has hell sweep and I was sidewalking and the last hit, the slaughter hook, it clipped me. So many people do this. Uh, you have to understand that when you're sidewalking, as I showed here, and you, you, this is your opponent, he is hitting here, and this is you, you're starting to walk around him. As soon as you press a button, any button, any attack, your hitbox expands like this. You suddenly become Bob or Kuma. You're super fat. And that's how you get clipped. And that, that's all of those instances where you're like, I, but I was at his back. I was standing in his back. How did that clip me? You press the button and then magically your hitbox is suddenly like this. Oh, that, that's a beautiful painting. Your, your hitbox becomes huge. So, when you're sidewalking to get someone in the rear... <laughs> why did I do that? As I told you guys, do not press any buttons. Wait for his string to end. Keep walking. You'll be in Kazuya's back if he does uh, Hell Sweep 1. Wait for it to end. Do not press any buttons. I see a lot of beginners do this and it's uh, just a big mistake. Uh, and then we have to talk about uh, all of these character-specific sidewalks or sidesteps. Uh, we're gonna do this at a very basic level. I told you guys about um, the general rule of matchups. Like, for example, Brian. Let's keep Brian and Lars. Versus Brian, we might not actually sidestep too much because his spatial control is so strong. His homing moves are so strong. The tracking on a lot of his normal moves, amazing. So you know what? I'm not gonna step. 
I don't need to step because his 50-50 isn't even that scary. The hatchet kick. I'll just take it. And I won't duck because the mids are so strong. This is someone who knows the Brian matchup. So here, sidestep and sidewalk. But, uh, and, okay, I'm, I just want to stress again, this is on a general level. I'm not saying you should never step Brian. I'm just, I'm talking general rule. So I hope you understand that. And with Lars, it's the complete opposite. Extremely vulnerable to sidestep right, not left. Right. Just kills him. He has a few homing moves, but he has to take risks. They're not that good. Everything else, just do that. His greatest weakness is gonna be blown up. So if you wanna be a successful sidestepper, you have to know character-specific stuff like this. Uh, and I'm gonna try and cover this in my general rule anti-character defense video that will be out soon on Blu-ray and DVD. No, on my YouTube channel. But so I I'm gonna work on that. And... Uh, I also want to uh, show you guys, like, we, we can do like this. We're gonna again use Brian as an example, and this is very interesting. Let's say we have Brian, and we have Law. Both of these characters are characters where, no, we, we just don't step them. No SS. And again, ge speaking generally. Because Law as well shuts down spacing. His homing moves are so good, like back four, back three. It's very hard to step law, so you take a risk doing that. <laughs> then it's very interesting to put on the other side, Kuma Jack. And the interesting thing here is that no SS, but here it's completely reversed. <laughs> it's a player who's playing them. It's a player himself. Jack, if you've ever seen a good Jack, he relies on backdash. Uh, if we're fighting here, this is Jack. No, wait. Oh, shit. Oh, no, what did I just do? No. Uh, whatever, we'll keep it. If this is Jack, he will play a 2D game. He will move back and forth. And this is because Jack's hitbox is so wide. And Kuma as well. It's like, they move back and forth. They can't really sidestep anything, they're so wide. So I, I just fi find that interesting, like, again, character, specific knowledge, you know, Brian and Law, they lock down spacing. We don't sidestep them. But if we play Kuma and Jack, we don't sidestep ourselves, because uh, we're, we're so aware of our weakness. Um... Oh no, did I, did I fuck myself completely here? Um, so, like that. Um, and as a last example, I, I just want to explain how complicated character-specific sidestepping can be. Uh, here is a Kazia player, that little round ball there. And here is a Double Gym player. And here is us. We're gonna defend against both of these. Because they're coming at us with a 50-50. Like so. We're running towards us. We've just tech rolled. And the Kazuya player, let's say he's not a very... He's gonna go with the classic 50-50. Forward, forward, free. And then he's gonna use Hell Sweep. We know what we're doing. Kazuya is weak to, to sidestep left. So what we do is we sidewalk left. This will very reliably counter both of those options, no problem. But so why is Dalgian so strong? Well, this is one of the details that makes him so strong. It's just so complicated try trying to deal with him. So here we have a 50-50 mid-low. Uh, Devil Jin comes at us with... He could do a low level Devil Gym player will come at you with Hell Sweep or Up Forward 4. But what a really good Devil Gym player might do is come at you with While Standing 2 and Hell Sweep. So Kazuya, Forward Forward 3, Hell Sweep, Devil Gym, While Standing 2, Hell Sweep. This is a 50 
50? It is mid-low, just like Kazuya's. So here we sidewalk left. We have successfully evaded the hell sweep. Here's the hell sweep. It's, uh, it's low, it tracks this direction. But now here's the problem that you don't get with Kazuya. <laughs> here is the while standing too. And it tracks this direction. <laughs> So with Kazuya, forward, forward, free, this direction, hell sweep, this direction. Do you see why Devil Jin is so complicated to play against? And why, while his 50 50, you know, it's, as I wrote here, it's a 50 50 mid low, but it's also a sidestep 50 50, as you can see here. Oh, those are balls. Oh, shit. So that, that's also a 50-50. What direction to step? So th this is one of Devil Jin's strengths, you know, what makes him so complicated to handle. And why sidestepping against him, you know, it's like nothing. You can take nothing for granted. But this is where a very good Kazuya player will learn how to do wave dash into while standing too which will be the option that covers both of these sides. Uh, that's what you see Boa Love do so well with Kazuya, Wave Dash while standing too. So you can mix that up with Hell Sweep. But again, Kazuya, just a di very difficult character, you take risks. So if you want the while standing too, that's minus 18 on block. So if they bait you, a sidestep into a guard could hurt a lot. And Devil Jin's while standing too is only minus 12. It's just a very, very good move. Um, so uh, that is going to be it for this video. This quick introduction to sidestepping. This is a topic I could talk about for a very, very long time. We could have talked more about when in this video. If, 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 even if we, we covered that a little bit. Uh, but uh, it, it's just very complicated. I, I hope this at least gave you a little, little insight into how I feel sidestepping works in this game. And I hope you look forward to my uh, anti-character, super specific general rule video that will hopefully be out rather soon. Uh, but other than that, I'm just gonna wish you a lovely day and I hope you enjoy your uh, upcoming weekend. Take care.